scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. You may be saying there is no favor. Nobody wants to bless me just because people are wicked. No, there is something you don't know that has not translated to a grace you are carrying to produce that result. The same person who will refuse to give you resources will go to someone else and be on his knees and say, let me sow into your life. So the person was not greedy. His greed is relative to your ignorance. Is someone learning? Let me ask you an honest question right now. How many areas of your life can you point at? How do I know, by the way, that I am experiencing darkness, absence of results? Very simple. The clearest litmus test of the presence of darkness in any area of your life is absence of results. And for many, absence of consistent results. Because in this kingdom, consistent results is proof of mastery. Are we learning now? When I started with God, please pay attention. When I started with God, I became aware of the sheer extent of ignorance in my life. Ignorance that came from my background, both sociological and spiritual. The first thing I did with my destiny was to stand by the grace of God and take full responsibility for my destiny. That's what many people have not done. The prodigal son had to take responsibility. He said, how many hired servants has my father? And I am here feeding with the swine. Here's what he said, I will arise. Everybody say responsibility. Please shout it, say responsibility. For as long as you are still blaming your father, still blaming your mother, still blaming idol worship, still blaming Bauchi state, still blaming yourself for being a northern or a middle belter. If I was born somewhere in London, I would have, you are, you've been angry and finding flimsy excuses. Can I tell you, the first key tonight to rise in light is to be aware that you are absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life. The kind of Christianity that makes God and others absolutely dependent on the outcome of your life without your personal impute is an irresponsible faith practice. If anything must change, I must know that I am the most active participant in sponsoring that change. So for as long as you keep excusing poverty, how can they allow Sharia? No problem. It's we are like that. You will keep giving the spirits that manage that mindset, the license to camp around your thinking and keep repeating circles of pain and poverty. For as long as you get up and you say, no problem, my own is, is just my blood group, it's just my genotype, that's how all of us are in our family. It may be sincere, but is that the truth based on God's word? You can make up your mind that this pattern of being sick and collapsing in an embarrassing manner must stop and must be on a search for light. Can I tell you this? Listen carefully. Miracles happen instantly, but the pre 
preparation for miracles take a long time. Let me repeat myself. Miracles happen instantly, but the preparation for miracles will take a while. Results and manifestations will happen instantly in your life, but the word framework that culminates to that instant result may take a while. Most people do not have the endurance to build a high level of spiritual illumination that will produce results in their life. Back to my example. You came here tonight. You are seated in this auditorium. You are sitting or standing outside. And you are saying, Apostle, if I have a chance to talk to you, I will ask you to pray for me over my finances. This is the area that has refused to answer. Can I tell you, you are not the first to suffer poverty. I repeat, you are not the first to suffer poverty. My Bible says the things that are written are for time, that they are for our learning, so that we through the patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. That means you can go back from scripture and through the life of people who have gone through that experience and begin to find what light did they find that bailed them out of that nonsense. You will read the story of people. You are not the first to be cursed. Apostle is because you don't know my grandfather. The day you see him, you will know why I'm the way I am. I sympathize with you for coming out from such a demonic family. But go and ask Jabez. Do you know what it means for your own blood mother to be the one to curse you? The Bible says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Why? Then it, it reverses the story back and says the mother cursed him simply because she bore him in sorrow. But Jabez got to a point in his life, he said, I can't keep giving excuses. He says, oh, that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast. Are we together? Yes. One thing I know for sure is the day you truly get tired, even the devil will respect your determination. Most people are not tired enough. That's why you see, you may not believe something I'm about to tell you, but pain is a gift from God to stimulate your advancement. There are dimensions of pain that are demonic and pain has its jurisdiction. When it crosses its jurisdiction, one of the indicators that a woman is ready to give birth is pain. Mothers, am I correct? No matter how healthy you are, that pain factor, in fact, the doctors help to verify there is a level of pain. They say, no, you are almost there. You are not there. There is the one when that pain comes, you will know you are ready to give birth. He said, as soon as Zion travels. Most of you have not been pushed to the world to an extent where you can say, you know what? For the next three days, I'm not coming out again. I must find this secret. The day five of your children return back home with PTA letter. And they say, they told us to return to our irresponsible father who claims to be a man of God and cannot pay our school fees. It may be a bad scenario, but sometimes it can push you and you say, do you know what? This is it. This is the moment, Lord, I'm going to search for every scripture from Genesis to Revelation that talks about the blessing of the Lord. If I came from a poor family, let a poor family not come out of me. If I came from a family of witchcraft, let witchcraft not come out of me. I am ready to be that bridge that, that ends the old and begins the new. Almost every great man in the kingdom will tell you he came to a point in his life where he said, this is enough. If the prodigal son did not deteriorate to a point where he fed with swine, he would not see the reason to return back. Some of you, the reason why you came for this conference tonight is what is pursuing you. If nothing was pursuing you, you probably would laugh and say, look at people coming to stand. Hallelujah. You run based on what is pursuing you. If it's a fowl that is pursuing you, you can jog around and just smile. But if it's a lion that is pursuing you, if your shoe removes, you will not turn back. I can buy another one when I'm saved. But for now, I need rescue. This is the place 
of surrender do to me what you want this is the place of encounter listen can I tell you everyone in one minute I just want you to think think about the many things that have happened around your life think of the many things that have happened around your family that you know needs to change now not tomorrow think of the fact that out of 20 people in your extended family nobody is genuinely born again there is a spirit that makes sure that people don't get serious with God think about that do you want that to continue think of the fact that there are 15 graduates in your life and extended family and nobody seems to have a job because there are altars that sit down crossing their hands and say we have drawn the line let's see who rises man of God think about the work God has committed to you is this the greatest expression does it look like the vision you saw think of your spiritual life the ups and down epileptic prayer life is that a reflection of growth think of your word study life once per month study or study during emergency or study just to fish out a sermon is that the greatest explanation of your Christian life listen I'm saying this because if you don't have a reason to be angry with where you are there is no need to go forward are we together it is when a baby gets tired of staying in the mother's womb that he starts informing her that I have exhausted my my tenancy in your womb and it's time for me to find space is that true I made up my mind as a man of God that my life will be a commendable reflection of the life and the expectations of God I knew it would cost me tears but I was willing to go through it I knew it would cost me time but I was willing to go through it. I knew it would sting my ego because I will come to a point where I will have to be aware of my ignorance. I made up my mind that no matter what it takes, under God, I will not be ashamed if I find out I do not know anything. I will learn with patience and with humility. I burned the bridges behind me. The narrative that you come from a local environment and a village and you cannot rise to be global. I caused that narrative and I told myself that in my lifetime I will rewrite that narrative. The narrative that you, just because your background may not be the best expression, it means you cannot rise. It's a lie. I'm here to tell, to challenge you. Take all those thinking away and say, Lord, I believe in where you are taking me. I may come from a village and a house where there was no light. We use lantern. So what? Arise. Shine. For thy light is come. I'm saying this because seated in this congregation, inside and outside, there is a man of God who God has been, the visions God has shown you, there is nothing about you that looks like it yet. And the devil is lying to you and say, you of all people, where are you going to? Look at your brothers and your siblings. I'm here to announce to you that light is a lift. It can carry you from one floor. The same way a lift picks you from the base of any building to the highest floor. We don't have so much of these buildings in Nigeria, but when you go across Europe, and several parts of the world you can see buildings that are over 200 and 300 floors and in less than 10 minutes the lift can pick you you may not even know you are moving you just see the numbers counting the lifting power there, there is a power that the out listen he told Abraham he said from where thou art lift up your eyes your legs may not be able to go but your eyes can look once light you can see it from where you are lift up your eyes from where you are lift up your eyes 
from that one room lift up your eyes having the rent issue still lift up your eyes with 10 members alone lift up your eyes having everybody around your family confused and not knowing where to go lift up your eyes man of god respectfully speaking let me challenge you don't say Bauchi is the reason why ministry is not working i was in zaria for more than 11 years doing ministry in the harshest of islamic conditions i can tell you there may be something you do not know don't say i cannot prosper here it depends on what you know or you do not know my assignment is to provoke you tonight that it is time to stop giving excuses and go for light for someone after this conference you may need to travel out of Bauchi and go and source for materials and return back and lock yourself for the next three days don't just buy useless materials buy materials that attend to the area of darkness are we together Lord, I found out that this issue of witches and wizards, I go to bed and I'm seeing myself having dreams, secondary school, writing exams, an old house. What am I doing there? You just sit down and say, one day go better. You are joking. The devil will cut short your life. You go and get relevant materials on the blood, on the victory of the believer, and you settle down and flog it out with destiny. Why is everybody I'm connected to successful people and yet nobody remembers me? There is something called the book of remembrance. You just don't know how to open it. That night, the Bible says, could not King Ahasuerus sleep. He says, he said, bring me the chronicles. And they found there where Mordecai saved his life and was not rewarded. He said, who is in the chamber? They said, Haman. He said, come, what should be done to such a man? And he did that the night her man was planning to hang Mordecai by the next day. Don't say people love you. Has it translated to favor? Let me tell you how favor works. When God raises men, I use this example, I think it was in House on the Rock, um, for Tarkot. Let me use it. Two of you come, guys. Watch this. Let me show you how the favor of God works. If you ask me to lift this, I may not be strong enough to lift it by my hand. Is that true? But let me show you how favor works. Can you help me lift it? You are not seeing them. But with minimal effort, it's rising. And it's because I'm the only one you are seeing. So you will think it's just by my effort. But God has positioned Aaron's and hers. So they make the work easy. Please keep it down. Can I tell you the truth? Hardship has an explanation. I hope you know. There is a biblical explanation for hardship. Proverbs 13, 15 is the answer to a hard life and the explanation for it. The Bible says good understanding procured favor. It says but the way of the transgressor is hard. A transgressor is not a sinner. A transgressor is a violator of patterns. There are spiritual patterns that make for growth. There are spiritual patterns that make for influence. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to pray tonight. I came to tell you it's time to be tired. To be tired of where you are. And for the sake of God. Some of you, this, your being here tonight is an answer to mama's prayer of over 20 years. To say, Lord, I may have failed, I don't have knowledge, but can you raise somebody? The power of light. Back to that scripture, Genesis 1:15. So, all of this represents dimensions that are empowered by light. Now, here is a man. I love God sincerely, but nothing is working in my life. How do you enjoy a Christian experience with a poor prayer life, 
forward life, no favor, no strategic relationships, your health is deteriorated, are we together? Your life is threatened. That is not an example of the life of victory that Jesus gave us. He says, the thief cometh not but for to steal, John 10, 10, and to kill and to destroy. He said, but I am come that ye might have life and have it more abundantly. Why do you need to produce results in your life? John 15 and verse 8, herein is our father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. That means in your bearing fruit, you prove that God is not a liar. John 15 and verse 16, it says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. To ordain means to legitimize your operation. I have legitimized you to go and bear fruit. Galatians 1 24, and they glorified God in me. That men will look at your life and give glory to Jesus. You become an inspiration to people. I will always say it this way, you become a living epistle. That means if someone forgot his Bible at home, he doesn't get sad when he sees you because you are a continuation of his devotional. What he did not understand by reading the Bible, your life explains it. And someone is trying to understand favor and his loss as to how it works. You become a personification of favor and God refers you. He says, you did not understand what I said, but study the life of this person. He said, look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bore you. I call him alone and blessed him and increased him. There are men that can personify dimensions in God. Your assignment is to be so illuminated by the light of God's word that you not only become a sign and a wonder, but that your life becomes an inspiration to nations. They can sit down and your life becomes a spiritual study project. That when the devil lies to anybody and say you cannot rise, you are the face that God will use to cancel that thought. He says, look at this man. I lifted him right from your place. And you say, Lord, I now believe. Help my own belief. How about the power of God? There are many people who want to see the anointing of the Holy Spirit work in their lives. They've done everything they know to do, but they do not seem to have had a fair grasp on the operation of the anointing. And many people continue to get frustrated. And sometimes in anger, they just believe that everything that is a manifestation of the power of God must be demonic, not so. Do not generalize frustration. You may be frustrated, but it does not mean there is no way out. Are we together? If I try to turn the key to a door, how many of you have had certain doors where it looks like you are the only one who knows what you do to that door to open? You lift it small before you turn it, then bring it down. Someone can come and suffer around that door and it will refuse to open. And you come with mastery. You already know what to do. So just because you are suffering in an area, don't generalize it. Go to them that sell and buy. There are always people that sell. To sell means the people who will give it to you at a cost. The cost is meekness. The cost is humility. Use humility to buy truth. Use meekness to buy truth. Use honor to buy truth. Buy the truth, he says, and sell it not. You don't buy it with naira and cobble. Those are mundane things. You use honor to buy truth. You use hunger to buy truth. You use meekness to buy truth. Go to them that sell and buy. There are them that sell in Bauchi. There are them that sell dimensions you have not seen in your spiritual life. Humble yourself and buy. There are them that sell across this nation. There are people who have gained mastery over prosperity. There are people who have gained mastery over character. There are people who have gained mastery over influence. There are people who have gained mastery over their union with the Holy Spirit. Go to them that sell and buy. When you go to buy something in the market, there are times that you go to look for a spare part and people will tell you, oh, 
if it's for this car, there is only one man we know in this place. Is that true? That was the humility of Saul, the son of Kish and the servant. When the father's donkey got missing, after three days they were tired, they said, let's go back. And the servant said, no, there is a man. Mm, I know there is God, but there is still a man. Because God uses men. His system of advancing men is men. There is a man whose word does not fall to the ground. And as soon as Saul met with Samuel, even without talking to him about it, the donkey started going back home. Can I tell you, what looks like a mountain to you is only relative to the kind of grace you carry. There are graces when you encounter it will trivialize your mountain of 20 years and make it look like a mold hill. Challenges are not generic. They are only relative to the anointing confronting it. I can tell you this one by the Spirit. By the privilege of God's grace, I have met so many people in the body of Christ in this nation and across the globe. I am amazed at the kinds of anointings that people carry. Some of them, you don't know them. Some of them are old people. Some of them are not even, they are not even on TV. You don't know anything about them. Phenomenal anointings that they've carried based on light. Go to them that sell and buy. And every time you see them that sell, don't disrespect it. Find out how they got it and they got the authorization to be the distributors of it. A seller is a distributor. How did God trust them with that grace? I will tell you the reason why many of us respectfully speaking, especially around the north and the middle belt, I did say this in Vouch yesterday. The reason why there is a slow rate of growth, I'm sorry to say it, I am family relative to the region. It is pride. Pride over nothing. Pride. The Gankai over nothing. You see, I've been to several regions in this nation and there are regions where even if it is a baby that has the solution, they can kneel down with us touching what they are looking for. But we pray that God will help us. Can I tell you, don't be ashamed of what you don't know. Open up your heart and learn it. You see, if you take a candle, if I give all these gentlemen candles and you are the first person to have it, when you bring your candle and they light it, we will not even know whose candle lit which ones. Are you seeing that now? Receiving knowledge does not reduce you. It only increases you. I am passionate about learning and knowledge and I honor your fathers in PFN here for leaving their busy schedules to come. It's a lesson for us to learn. If the fathers in the land with what God has done and their many years of experience will come and sit down, it means there is something we need to learn. God is using their life and their humility to teach us something. Many of us, respectfully speaking, in their position will not do what they are doing. I know has been the plague of the African man. I know has been the unbecoming of we in these regions. Let the man who thinks he knows know that he does not know as he ought to know. When I sit down before great people, I don't sit as Apostle Joshua Selman. I humble myself and I say, please, I don't know much about this area, that area. I humble myself like a sponge and I receive with humility. When I see people with proven track records and I know they love God sincerely, the Bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. What you are looking for, somebody has it already, oh. What is a dream and an aspiration for you is someone's current realm of reality. I gave them a story in Gombe about the first crusade that we had. Very powerful crusade. Few people, but it was an honestly powerful crusade as far as signs and wonders is concerned. Because God had helped me in that area very early. I had gotten the keys. People were healed. People were blessed. But this issue of finances and this issue of influence. I believed I was a sincere man of God. And yet not more than 50 people came for the crusade. 
publicity, we prayed, we fasted as if I would fall down. And yet with all of that thing, I was grateful of course, but I knew this was not the best. At the end of that crusade, we were owing 150,000. It may not be much now, but just rewind your mind to that time. 150,000 will be millions now. And the sound people were on the crusade ground while I was shouting all the names of Jesus. Healer, provider, is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And the people I was owing, they were there just setting the sound waiting for me. I pleaded with them to please, for God's sake, allow me to concentrate and finish this crusade. We celebrated miracles and mighty things. Just, I'm, I'm using this to tell you, you can be excellent in an area, but don't use the area of proficiency to mean every other area is good. Naaman was a captain in the Syrian army. A valiant man was he, but he was leprous. Don't use the area of success to excuse the area of darkness. It is your assignment to turn every area of darkness to become light. Are we together? We finished the crusade. I had not paid the small hotel where we stayed. I had not paid the sound. The transport that would take the people back to Zaria. The transport money was not there. I had to tell them to call the driver. I knew somebody in a Nigerian Union of Road Transport Worker. And I said they should call them. That by God's grace, before they get to Zaria, the gates there, their money will be waiting for them. So the drivers agreed. They went and left me. Hotel bills there. The sound people were saying they are not going anywhere. They came from Kaduna. At least I must look for something. And they were serious. And I stood there. This was the preacher that God used. I said, God, how can you use me to heal the sick and save sinners? And you are suddenly acting like you went to bed over these areas. Do you know how frustrating it is to look like you get answers in an area and then in other areas? Can I tell you, most areas of God's silence is the area that your darkness prevails. You must contend for light. I remember pleading with someone who I used to know. I said, please, can you look for 20,000 for me at least? And then they gave me the 20,000. I gave the sound people. And I said, please find your way. You could just go. We'll meet and we'll settle everything there. God is faithful. Let me at least rest and finish this crusade. When I went back, I said, this is enough. I knew that if I continue to do ministry under that condition, one day I will start lying to people out of pressure. And I attacked that foolishness on time. So that by the time I start operating the prophetic, I will not start telling people lies. You see, let me tell you, most people you see who have deviated are not evil people. It is their carelessness with dealing with areas of darkness that the devil used as an advantage to now haunt them at the time of glory. So when God is beginning with you, he stretches you to make sure you write a list of the areas of darkness and start dealing with them. Because... If you allow those areas of darkness, they will become your areas of defeat in the future. I made up my mind. I said, Lord, you are giving me a global ministry and I'm struggling with money to pay sound people. How are you ever going to build? How are you ever going to preach the gospel? How are you ever going to do the things you are doing? And that was when I had this scripture. Go to them that sell and buy. Don't sit in arrogance. Everybody has the currency to buy what you need. Humility is the currency. Meekness is the currency. Passion is the currency. Pursuit is the currency. With a data of 1,500 naira, you can find the information you have been searching for for years. No one is with an excuse to remain at your current level. Many people have sacrificed to put together those information. I made up my mind and today I give God glory that I made that decision. What area of your life are you yet to experience the power of God? Is it your spiritual life? Is it your word study life? Is it longevity? 
you sleep every night <laughs> excuse me you sleep every night and they are trying to kill you find the key to longevity before they kill you in real life if they are trying to kill you from a dream you think they will spare you physically most of us let me tell you it is our laxity that allows demonic things from the realm of the spirit to materialize for one year stretch every time you lie down you are in a coffin every time you lie down you are in the grave what are you doing you are alive go and get materials write out the scriptures that talk about long life and study it that was what I did because I travel all the time I'm in the air I'm on the road I'm not afraid of death but I know my death now will be a disadvantage to the body of Christ and the purposes of God but just assuming and say no problem I will not die terrorism wickedness everywhere I went to fish together the principles that make for long life and I studied it and found it as a key women there are some of you here that cook very well once upon a time you could not cook you know when you started learning today if we ask you to cook for the over 5,000 people all you will ask for is just time and the money for ingredients that's all you will not be afraid because you gain mastery if you ask me to cook for you now the first thing I'm going to ask you is how many of you and then I'll say you must sign that you will eat anything that you see me cook so that I know I'm not wasting my time and I will be fidgeting there and praying and say God why add this I hope it's not too early I hope it's not too late and if I get sad I just close everything there and just say Lord I've done my best let your mercy and favor finish cooking the remaining part for me that is a reflection of my ignorance in that area are we together but you can tell mama please can you cook and mama can laugh and say how many people you say 30 people and she says only I thought they were 100 the size does not matter because light is present they will enter the kitchen and with mastery they can tell you no 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 that size of salt is too much and you are like I'm don't worry and at the end of it it will look as if they measured it with surgical precision this is what I'm trusting God, that God will bring you into that you will be so sound in knowledge you will know what to do part time and per season can I tell you the truth please look up some of you after this there are things you will find you will run and go back home and say mama the food you did not eat for me sit back and start getting ready to enjoy it that in your lifetime I will be a consolation a son or a daughter of consolation apostle people die early where I come from I understand but there is something you can do about it remember your tears stop when the book is open your tears don't stop when you are tired of crying your tears stop when the book is open for someone God is granting you the grace tonight to open this book you have opened many other books but not this book you have trivialized this book at the expense of many other books you have opened books of worry you have opened books of pain you have opened books of regret but God is telling you there is only one book that is the cure for weeping. He called the light day and he called the darkness night. We're going to do three things very quickly and then we'll wrap up today. Number one is we're going to pray and then number two, I'm going to speak over your life. I promised that I was going to step out and pray and bless those outside. Please protocol while we are praying. Let me know if it's convenient. Provided those outside will behave themselves and not run around to come when I'm outside. Those outside, if you are going to behave yourself and stay where you are and not cause commotion, if you will be disciplined outside, then I can come out and stand just to honor your sacrifices of sitting outside even through this wind and the rest to speak over your life 
Listen. I thank my God today for the times when even through the tears I didn't stop getting light. And can I tell you, till today, in spite of the beats that God has helped, in spite of what God has done, I still remain a student of light. It is a school I will never graduate from. Can I tell you this? The higher you rise, the more you need light. So do not allow yesterday's success to frustrate you into failure because yesterday's excellence will be today's mediocrity. You will need high level transitory light. Light that shifts you from face to face. Go and find light that relates to your area of wealth and abundance. Don't suffer and punish other people with poverty, giving all kinds of spiritual excuses. You can prosper and still make heaven. Lazarus made it with his poverty. Abraham made it with his prosperity. The choice is yours. Get light over your health. You see how the devil is destroying the health of people today? You need to find out the keys for health. Health. They are life to those who find them. And health to their flesh. Go and find the keys that deal with favor. You need this one. No. In this wicked world, you need favor. Favor is what gives you an edge in this unfair, tribalistic, unfair, wicked world. It is the favor of God that becomes your distinguishing factor. That's what took a village girl, Hadassah, from Shushan and exalted her till she became queen together with the king ruling over 127 provinces go and find light you are in ministry please listen to my teaching that I preached in Gombe yesterday and even this morning find the grace for the supernatural otherwise you will be ready for empty pews I assure you because the hunger in God's people, they don't just want a sermon. They want a sermon with proof. They want the gospel communicated with the power of the Holy Spirit back in it. Hallelujah. Your prayer life. Remember, demons don't die. Remember, demons are spirits. If you do not have a robust prayer life, you will become weak spiritually to your detriment. You will never re really truly be able to be transformed. You may never be able to live the fullness of God's life. And what of all the arsenals of darkness that will seem to build a system of resistance against your life and your destiny? We are wrapping up. A sound word life. I found your word and I did eat it. It was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. You need to contend for the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, the Bible says, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. It says they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, Psalm 82 from verse 5 to 7. And all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Verse 7 says, but you shall die like mere man, like, and fall like one of these princes. It takes the study of God's word to build that capacity in the spirit. And let me tell you this. Satan does not only want you to backslide, he wants you to die. I repeat, Satan wants you to die. You have to refuse to die. He said, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The evils and the arrows that fly by day in 24 hours is enough to bring you down. Not just physical accidents, the spiritual arsenals that attempt to defeat the believer. But you can build immunity and fortification by light. And you can live in peace, knowing that God has become your defender, standing by you like a mighty, terrible one. Has someone learned something today? So please hear me. When this conference is over, that's not the end of it. I only came here to...
to stimulate hunger in your heart after this conference go and get teachings write a list of the areas in your life where you have seen darkness clearly take responsibility no more excuses it is not just the government it is not just my pastor it is not just my region i take responsibility and ask the spirit of grace to come and help you become like a spiritual archaeologist in search for truth the bible says for everyone that seek it find it then when you find it let me tell you what happens you must obtain grace to walk in keeping with the truth you have found because another word for faith is obedience the bible says the word that we heard the same word they heard is what we heard but it did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it truth itself does not bless you it is truth that is understood and diligently applied are we together now that ye know these things the bible says happy are you if you do them let me say this before we begin to pray if there is anything at all i sat back there and i listened to your pastor celebrate and appreciate the workings of god upon my life and i was just nodding my head as i was listening to him and i was saying if god's people know that what they think is unique to Joshua Selman is everybody's inheritance in Christ. If you can find the requisite level of light. Can I tell you, the difference between you and anyone you admire are three things. Number one, the level of light that that person has found that you have not found. Number two, the level of relationships that that person has in his life that reflect the superior belief system he now has. Number three, the level of engracing that has come to that person in honor to the light he has carried. That's what separates men. The difference between you, the former you, and the future you will be greater light and greater power. As someone learned, those outside you remind me of many years when I stood outside also standing for six hours at a Reinhard Bonke crusade in Joss I was already in ministry at its infancy but I heard that a great man was coming and I left Zari and I came to Joss outside reminds me of my former self and I stood there watching a man so humble and yet so powerful i remember what he taught very simple message annoyingly simple and when he was done i remember him trying to take water so that he would minister the baptism of the holy spirit tens of thousands of people across that ground and my eyes were opened. That was the first time I saw a visionary expression of the Holy Spirit. I saw a giant bird that was bigger than this auditorium hovering around that entire space. I thought other people were seeing it. I, I didn't come there to show I was a man of God. I came with hunger. Many of you have heard my story. By the second day of that crusade, I made up my mind that I have to find a way of serving and sowing into this anointing. And since I didn't have any money then, I said at least I will sow the seed of service. I was pushing people on wheelchair. To, I was there 3 p.m. in the afternoon, helping to push the people who were going to go to the front. And someone met me and said, I'm not in the committee that should do it. I said, you are joking. You don't know where I'm coming from. And you don't know the hunger that brought me here. True story. As I was moving them, I said, Lord, this is how it will be also in my crusades in the future. Because you see, I know by light that the anointing you honor is the anointing you receive. You cannot receive in the presence of this honor. Let me tell you this. I stood on that ground for six hours. I remember, you may have heard me say in my teaching, 
there was a pregnant woman who was standing near me and you know what it means for a pregnant woman to stand occasionally she'll be tired she will lean on me how do you now tell this woman madam please just it would look like you're a wicked person I was almost going to say why did you come to this crusade ground but after that encounter I knew something came upon my life because tonight even though our time is up but I can tell you something from heaven is going to land on somebody's destiny for some of you you are outside you are saying I'm far to the gate will the anointing of the spirit touch me the God that we serve has an all seeing eye he does not just see the faces of men he sees their hearts if I had said that time I wanted to see Renard Bonke I'm sure the, the military people would have bundled me and thrown me somewhere but I said I may not see him but I honor him with all my heart as touching the sacrifice and something landed from him to my life ladies and gentlemen hear me I didn't just come to speak to you and stimulate an appetite I also came by the privilege of God's grace that something from heaven will rest upon your life mantles are falling here tonight anointings are falling here tonight for the kings to be born for revival to return for the kings to arise for revival to return yeah Ali Ali yo Ali yo Ali yo Ali Ali yo oh ho Ali Ali yo Ali yo Ali yo Ali Ali yo Now hear me we are going to get into a prayer session right now and please let me encourage you don't allow Satan cheat you at this session forget about who you came with and you are going to cry to God Father let my destiny become a feast of light from tonight light from heaven as touching the areas of need fall upon my life go ahead and pray outside pray inside pray And he called the light day and the darkness he called night grant me access to the light that turns my night to day man of God are you praying businessman are you praying champion in the making are you praying apostle in the making are you praying prophet in the making are you praying evangelist are you praying kingdom financier are you praying expose my areas of ignorance open me up oh god to the areas I do not have sufficient light. What principle controls lifting? What principle controls spiritual health and wellness? What principle controls prayer fire? What principle controls a healthy word life? What principle controls influence? What principle controls relationships? What principles control character? What principle controls speed? Grant me by your spirit. Reveal to me. Someone is praying. Shedekete bakata bakatoska ligrande begetis. Impra katoska ti la kaparanda shkati la katos. What principle controls complete total deliverance?
deliverance and freedom from demonic forces.
the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh, servants, and in the sight of the people. When I found it, Esther chapter 2 and verse 15, the B part says, And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. I came from a background with my own share of witchcraft and diabolic things and wickedness. And I knew that there has to be a way to keep this wicked spirit at bay. And I found the key. Psalm 66. Say unto God, verse 1 now or 3? Verse 3. I hope I'm right on that. How terrible art thou in thy works? He said, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. When I desired influence, not for the sake of self-aggrandizement, for the sake of the kingdom, I found in Acts chapter 12, the first 10 verses, control, there was a key there that God opened my eyes. He said that when Peter was bound hand in chain and there were eight soldiers who bound him, the Bible says, but prayer, verse 4, was made of us five now but prayer was made to God of the church for him and an angel came and loosed him and when an angel loosed him there were three gates that he passed the first word or the first gate the second word or the second gate and he said he came to the iron gate that opens to the city there is a gate that opens to the city is the iron gate if that gate does not open, you can be in a city. And yet spiritually you are outside that city. The iron gate that opens to the city. I also found the key to influence. Being that in Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1 and 3. That Gentiles don't just come to you. They come to your light. And even their arrogant kings will not come to your light. They will come to the brightness of your rising. The consistency of your results. Can I tell you this? Please go back home and begin a definite project of searching the truth and the keys and the mysteries that control the various areas of your life. Can I tell you, if you spend the whole 2022 finding just three mysteries that work three maybe your spiritual health maybe favor and maybe the power of relationships if that is the only mystery you find you have made this year a fruitful one because when you truly find it it will show let me wrap up by sharing with you a vision years ago i fell into a very serious vision God was showing me the power of knowledge and the corresponding anointing that comes from it. The Lord opened my eyes and I saw a giant like a gate. It was very ancient. And when I looked at it, I was zoomed into that vision. And I found out that that door or that gate was made of smaller doors. And on every one of those doors, a scripture was written. And I noticed they were opening and closing, the smaller doors, opening and closing. And every time they open, light will come from it. And the Holy Spirit revealed to me that every one of those scriptures and those smaller doors, they represent dimensions of the believer's possibility in Christ. Every time you catch the revelation corresponding to the scripture written, the engracing and the anointing to defend that scripture is released to your life. And your life becomes a testament of that profession of faith. That means everything you claim to know and you have not received the grace to defend it, you do not know it enough. Remember our teaching on F? Maybe you have moved from 14 to 35. I congratulate you, but it is still F. Continue moving. A day will come your consistency will cross E and C and B and you will now by the privilege of God's grace, you will stand tall in the realm of masters. 
he said he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully is someone ready to pray one last prayer lord i obtain grace and discipline to contend for strategic light i obtain grace and i obtain discipline i'm about to minister to you now grace and discipline someone pray I obtain grace and discipline. I obtain grace and discipline. I obtain grace and discipline. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. One of the mysteries that move us forward is the power and the ministry of the anointing. The anointing is able to come upon a man and cause you to rise. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. He said unto me, Son of man, stand up upon your feet. And Ezekiel had no strength. Verse 2 says, And the Spirit entered into me, and he set me upon my feet. There are times you want to rise. The desire is there, but the engracing is not there. There are three things that will happen right now. Very quickly, I'm going to be ministering, speaking over your life. And then because of time, I'll just pray generally for the sick and the oppressed. And then because of the weather, I may not want people rolling inside and outside. So I'll just do a general speaking, please. Forgive me. I'm sure that another time I owe Bauchi again. This time around, I'm sure that we'll organize it. It will not be in a place like this. We'll look for somewhere bigger and God will give us the opportunity to now minister and prophesy to us in details and God will grant us grace in the name of Jesus. But my assignment tonight is that something must come from heaven upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are sick in your body, I want you to lay your hands right now where you are trusting God for a miracle. You are sick in your body, please lay your hand right now. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong. In the strength of the Lord, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength. Lay your hands say, I want to pray for you. I believe in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. Many of you, you have suffered too long with devilish infirmities that must give way right now. As I say in the name of Jesus, I want you to shout a loud believing amen, both inside and outside. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command every spirit that is back of any infirmity, plaguing anyone here, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare, be released right now in the name of Jesus. Be released right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, I declare, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. From the crown of your head, even to the soles of your feet, be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
every eye condition be healed now in Jesus name every bone condition be corrected now in Jesus name pains around the joints and around the back be healed now in the name of Jesus blood conditions hepatitis I decree and declare be healed now in Jesus name migraine pounding migraine headache I curse you in the name of Jesus Christ blood diseases of all sorts in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I bring you life and healing right now heart palpitations be healed in Jesus name peptic ulcer be healed in Jesus name all kinds of lumps and growths around your body be healed in Jesus name and every other sickness whether mentioned or not by the power that raised Christ from the dead I decree and declare be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ who is Stephen Stephen now it's going to be difficult to minister because there are so many people outside and um, I'm sure that I will step outside a bit just to speak over them and I don't want people we don't have to bring people outside they would mess up this place with because of the who is Stephen but all the same if you go home dirty and delivered it's a good bargain is there someone with the name Maimuna Maimuna I just heard that name Memuna, whether you are inside or outside. Who, who has that name? Memuna. That's your name. You are a lady. Memuna. Please verify, make sure that. Is that your name, my dear? My friend, the gentleman in white, what do you do? You're a student. I want to pray for you. The Lord is raising you to be a savior to your family. You believe that? Where are you from? Please don't bring people at random. Make sure that they... Madam, where are you coming from? Adamawa. Your name is Memuna. Is the mic working? I'm looking at you and in a vision, I'm seeing a road that I'd passed before in Adamawa and it takes me to a place, Mubi. Where are you coming from? Huh? Mubi. Am I doing something wrong? No? Praise God. I'm looking at this woman. I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom. But I'm looking at you and I'm not seeing a human being. I'm seeing somebody wrapped up by snakes. This is what I'm seeing. I want to pray for you. Can I pray for you? I stretch my hands right now. I command that devil out of her now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Out now by the power of the Holy Spirit. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed Adonai. in the name of jesus i declare complete deliverance for you not only you but this is a family thing just tying people down i release you this captivity comes to an end Okay, let me just pray. My conscience will not leave me if I leave this place and I know that I did not pray and minister to you. I'm going to pray right now. I don't know how we're going to do it. But there are people who have been under all kinds of yokes. The power of God is going to come on you now. 
inside and outside you are tired of certain things occurrences of darkness let's see how we can just bring a few here if the space is exhausted that's fine I'm going to begin to pray inside and outside and the power of God will come upon you to bring deliverance even inside this auditorium I'm already seeing people that the power of God will touch father in the name of Jesus I declare anyone who has been a victim of the operation of darkness lives and destiny tied down by all kinds of demonic things the Bible says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and even holiness and the sons of Jacob help that lady right now I'm about to dislodge those devils of darkness at the count of three I want you to shout Jesus bring those who are, on, are under the anointing out here are you ready one two three shout Jesus I command every devil let them go now bring them out in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit please help them whether you are an usher or not let me just have them out here in the name of Jesus Christ I rebuke every devil and every spirit release their destinies right now my God fire is burning here inside and outside all those outside lift your hands at the count of three I want you to shout Jesus and every planting that is not of God that devil must give way right now are you ready one two three shout Jesus come out of their destinies now release their destinies by the power of the Holy Ghost upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance I blot out handwritings and ordinances, ill speakings. Everything that does not name the name of Christ. I tell you, fire is falling outside by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be set free right now. Be set free right now. Be set free right now. Now listen, there are some of you here as you are standing here you are representing your families I'm going to pray for you the power of God will come upon you but that deliverance is for your entire family I'm praying again Lord I don't know where they are families that have been tied down and will not move forward at the count of three that anointing is coming upon you now one two three take that grace now I command every devil release them now release their families now please help them up the balcony outside release them now release their ministries now sir what do you do this man what do you do huh? you are a... huh? please help us with the mic are you are you in ministry ministry your own church you're under a ministry yes, sir. what else do you do I'm going to pray for you. Your fashions will take you to places you did not believe. Look at me, sir. You believe what I'm telling you? I stretch my hands and I declare. Let an anointing come upon you that will give you access to the hearts of kings. Take that fire now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never be the same. I release you into a new season by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. There is someone in this room you are called into the prophetic the power of God is coming on you right now right now right now as I'm speaking I open that season for you spring up her wells I declare may that dimension be opened now I open the fountain of the prophetic this couple are you husband and wife sir husband and wife 
please hold your hands together I'm seeing there is a strong prophetic grace I release that grace right now upon both of you in the name of Jesus please help her I decree and declare I don't know whether you're in ministry or not but step into a new season of the prophetic by the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ that power is still coming on people I'm still seeing people inside and outside there are some of you God has been working on you you've been fasting and praying and preparing and building stamina something is about to come upon your life in fact for two of you you have seen me ministering to you in dreams you saw it prophetically it was like an impartation I'm praying for you right now please help them please help them by the power that raised Christ from the dead in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God inside and outside right now let that fire fall upon your head in the name of Jesus help that lady please two of you lift your hands these two people you and you these two of you I want to pray for you what do you do you are pastors you are stepping into a new season hear me do ministry with integrity I stretch my hands at the count of three that fire is coming on both of you step into a new season now take that fire in the name of Jesus Christ you will never, never be the same by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. Never be the same. You've touched His grace. Hallelujah. Who works with UBA? United Bank for Africa. UBA. I just saw the logo of UBA. Who is that person? Your season has come. Come. How long have you been with them, my dear? Two years. Is she the only person I want to pray for you? I'm seeing somebody who works in UBA. There is a very strange lifting that God is bringing for that person. I use you as a point of contact. I will pray for you, but this is... Who is that person? You work in UBA? For how long? For how long? In the name of Jesus, I pray for you both. By the power of the Holy Spirit that you step into a new level I shift you by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ let favor speak for you even right now who has a name Jatau I don't know if it's your son name Jatau something there is Jatau I don't know if it's your name or your son name is there someone with that please verify verify before you bring people out What's your name, ma? What is it? Your surname. What's your what are the, your full names? Who is Josephine? What's your name? Josephine Jato. What's your name? Give her the mic. Please help us with this mic. I don't know. Josephine. Josephine Jato. Do I know you, ma? I want to pray for you. What do you do? God is going to lift you in a very strange way. Do you believe in the power of prophecy? My dear, shout Jesus as loud as you can. That anointing that has come upon you, captivity comes to an end. Please cover her in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. I bring you life and I bring you victory. My Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. It says, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Do you read that in your Bible? Liberty precedes transformation. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then it says, we all, the liberated ones now, with unveiled face, beholding him as in a mirror. It says, we are changed from glory even to glory. I pray for you, Josephine Jatel, by the power that raised Christ.
Christ from the dead even within the banking sector find favor I release that grace upon you it begins to speak evidently in your life in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ there is someone I'm seeing a vision of your loved one I don't know if it's cancer but I'm seeing like their stomach is swelling it's like they have fluid or something within their stomach I'm going to pray for the sick shortly I don't know if there's anyone whether you are inside or outside for sake of time I want to pray for you if you are outside no problem you can just lift your hand where you are I'm seeing someone the stomach is swelling that's your loved one now and it's like they are saying there is a fluid or something inside the stomach our time is gone we have to wrap up you are the one who is that person your loved one you oh you I hope you are not embarrassed madam what did the doctor say You are the lady that just came out here. Don't, don't cry. Don't cry. Okay, place your hand on your stomach. I will pray for you. I will pray for the sick. Now, let me use the opportunity and pray. If you know you or anyone has particularly any kind of growth, whether fibroid, whether any kind of malignant growth or whatever it is around, just lay your hand. You don't have to come out. Just lay your hand where you are. Or if you are standing for someone, please just lay your hand there. I want to pray particularly for those with growths. Whether you are male or female, you are standing for someone, just make contact with yourself. Please lay your hand there. Let's hurry up so we can finish. Look and leave, my brother, leave. Look to Jesus Christ and leave. Recorded in his word, hallelujah. This only that's true. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray right now, using you as a point of contact, madam. Look at me, the woman who came first. Lay your hand there. I'm not a medical person, but I know that once they start detecting this demonic growth and fluid in your body, it's only God that will deliver you. Am I right on that? You see the power of God touching that woman you are holding? That mama? I Please shift for me. Let me pray for her, my dear, the young lady. I'm seeing something being loose from her stomach. This woman, I stretch my hands right now. Out of her now! Now, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I pray for everyone with any kind of growth, whether it is cancer, whether it is fibroid, whether it is whatever demonic growth. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed right now. Agree with them, say amen. Be healed right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I bring you life and any spirit that is back of this. I curse that spirit in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Is it alright if I go outside for five minutes? Just to speak words of blessings over those outside. And then I come back and we wrap up. Will that be fine? Please everyone open your, your mouth and begin to pray. Everyone inside or outside. Let's begin to pray for one minute. Those outside, make sure you are praying. All of you outside, lift your hands. 
I came out because outside. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. Listen to me very carefully. There is power in the name of Jesus. There are thousands of you outside. I want to pray right now. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. If you can, the immediate space outside here. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of divinity.